All right, let's continue on with this OS dev. I think today on the docket I got write. I think it was read, but I figure we can't really read anything if we haven't written anything to a file. So I'm going to try to do the write syscall and maybe read afterwards and add some tests for that, or even get into loading programs and files again, which has been broken for a while. I had somebody open an issue on a on the GitHub repo because, I mean, the editor doesn't work right, and then the calculator and other things won't work either. So, yeah, that doesn't really work until we have probably working implementations of read and write, or at minimum open and close, but to be able to execute that data, uh, I don't know. I figure if we wanted to use the editor, I had to be able to write and read to a file first, and then the editor could be changed to use these syscalls. So I figured they needed to be in here first. But anyway, I'll get to write. I think I have most of the logic laid out here that I can do. Get the open file table entry that we're going to be writing to for the file. Uh, if the last seek went beyond the end of the file size, we're going to have to pad out to that new size, probably with zeros. We'll copy from the input buffer into the file which is going to be loaded to an address in the open file table entry for that, for this FD number. The file descriptor, if the flags have append, then the offset should go to the end of the file first and then write from the new, well, up to the new end of the file. If the file size is larger than the current allocation, we need to allocate more and add new blocks, possibly, yeah. So that, this is going to be annoying, but the other stuff shouldn't be too bad. If we're only writing less than a page worth of data, for example, it, this won't really come into play, but that's all right. I guess the only reason we wouldn't write the total amount of data that the user wants to is if that data doesn't exist in the input buffer, or if we're out of memory on the system. So those could be potential error cases later. If the current offset is greater than the file size, set a new file size, and return that. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> If we get through all of that. I do have numbers and wrappers for write, since I originally put that to do with uh, writing to the terminal, with writing to the screen. So I shouldn't have to add anything in here for that. And I already have write here, FD buffer in length. That all looks fine. So then it'd be the the system call for write, which I almost had there. This call write, SYS. If you can type, I can't type. So here, this doesn't seem to be too bad. We have it if it's just FD of one, we can say if it's standard in or standard out, and I have standard IO, I don't. Oh, we could type def that or include it in here anyway. I don't think it'd be too bad. Just another thing to include in this interrupts file, <laughs> this system call file will have standard I.O. solely so that I can put in standard in, out, and error, in case we want to use those like for write and things, which will be FD numbers 0, 1, and 2. So I'll go back down here. So if FD is going to be standard out, we'll say or FD is standard error. Right now we'll just write to the terminal, else we'll see what happens. I'll say an FD of zero. Technically, it's valid because you're writing the standard in, but I might say that that's going to be an error here. So let's change that. We'll say if FD is standard in. Right now, I'm going to have this be an error. Remove error later. But we'll say right now, we can't write to standard in, so unsupported. If it's outer error, we'll write to the terminal, else we'll have something else. And eventually I want to write the number of bytes that were actually written. So those will be up here. Let's say we have bytes written. We'll start out at zero, we didn't write anything, and at the end we'll move that into EAX and we'll return it. So I'll just copy this. And we'll say, we'll move bytes written. That'll be the return code. So if we write 10 bytes to a file, it should be 10 at the end. And if they write nothing to the file, it will be nothing, or it'll be negative one on error. That'll be all right. Okay, we need to offset into the open file table if it's zero or invalid. 
We have those. I suppose we could check this. If it's standard in, let's say, we could say if it's less than or equal, because this will be, should be zero, but uh, I guess I'll just put that here first as another additional guard clause. So if it's less than zero, we'll say that's going to be an error as well. Invalid FD. Unsupported for writes. Just return early for these. Terminal write should return the number of bytes that was written, but I'm not absolutely sure at the moment. This returns what? We look for return. Returns i. Okay. So where's i incremented up here, though? For the string that was passed in every byte, we're going to go past. Okay. So this counts it. So if we write an escape sequence as well, like setting the X and the Y numbers, we are also going to count that. So if they write like the escape and then X1, Y1, that would be escape, X1, Y1, that would be four, I guess, maybe with the semicolon included. Maybe a little iffy there, but I just wanted to make sure, yeah, we should iterate through the string and we'll, okay, we'll return I for that. Trying to go back, there we go. <laughs> so that should return the number of bytes written here. Although I could have it so we can just return in one place here automatically and that would be okay. I would have to overwrite probably with something. I could do that here. I wouldn't have to do that in inline assembly. No, I could, I could just write that separately, okay. So the result of writing to the terminal, let's write that separately. I'll write that to bytes written. Say terminal write will return bytes, um, I guess, consumed written. So that should be okay. It's a little awkward for the API to work in a more general case with these different things, but that's all right. So otherwise, we'll ultimately Return number of bytes written to FD. I'll say actually written. So that will pass on to here. Okay, yeah. So we'll go on to here. So we need to get the open file table entry. I'll do that. And that is called open file table right there. So we'll say open file table T, OFT. Have that be a pointer. We'll equal. The open file table offset by the FD number, which is passed in in EBX for this API. This system call. So we'll get the open file table entry for input FD. So then we can check if it's invalid or not, similar to how I've done things before. I guess with close, because I haven't done read yet. How did I do it for close? If it's less than zero, that's an error. If it's not found or it's not open, okay, I'll just do that. Should probably abstract that into a separate function. That's okay. So error if not found or not open. So okay, if it doesn't have an inode, it does not have a backing file. We can't write to it. If the reference count is zero. It's not open anymore anyway. Can't write to it. And we will move zero, which is bytes written, that is okay. I guess I could do G for this as well. Yeah, as a general case, this would be register or memory or what have you. That would be one thing done here. If the offset is greater, we do need to allocate additional pages and memory map up to that. Before we start writing, I guess that would be the same for O append. It would be greater than the size in bytes. I don't think that would be... If they seeked, if they use seek and went past the previous end of the file, and we have to write from that new end, we'd have to write to it regardless whether it was append or not. 
But the size wouldn't be updated at this point, I don't think. It would just have gone beyond the end. If it's larger, so this would this would be handled within this case. I'm just trying to think. <laughs> At the length two. Well, maybe I'll just worry about this in order first. If the offset given is greater than the size of the file. So the offset we're given would be in the open file table, and we're given a length, we're given a buffer. Okay. So let's let's do that. Check if current file offset is greater than put length or size of file. If so, last seek call went beyond end of file. I'll just do that. So that would be another if condition here. If the OFT offset value is greater than the end of the file, which is from the inode, so OFT dereference to get the inode file, dereference that pointer to get the size and bytes of the file. That would be the file size. So then what do we do in this case? We're going to allocate until we get to the this new size first, and we'll zero pad out to that. Okay. So let's do that. Allocate additional pages to reach new end of file from previous seek. And zero. Yeah, and zero pad the memory that was allocated. So how would we do that? Additional pages, well we need to get the size in pages of the additional size here, which would be this, the offset minus the size in bytes. I'll do that. Let's say bytes to allocate. So I don't have to think about what it means. <laughs> should be this new offset value minus current file size, which is the inode size and bytes. So if we want to allocate that, it wouldn't be malloc, it would be additional pages of memory. So how do we do this for open, which is right below? So I could kind of copy what I'm doing there. So I have to get bytes to blocks, then do that. So I will copy that over. Bytes to blocks would be bytes to allocate. And if it's zero, we'll do one. We'll do one by default. It shouldn't be zero, but maybe it is. Yeah, if there's a partial amount, yeah. Less than a page, that would be fine. That'd be one additional page. Otherwise, it'd be more than one according to how large. So if they, if they did a seek call to like 10K and the file's 2K, that would be 8K or two pages. But if they only went like 500 bytes beyond the end of the file, that's less than a page, but we have to allocate an additional one because we don't have that. We don't have any pages that would hold the data yet. So then we'd have to allocate again, which means I should probably abstract this into a, a separate function, but that's all right. Just copy that over because I don't have to remember that. <laughs> Make a new page, get the physical address to allocate it to, allocated that. Next available virtual address. Yep. Add equal one, FD equals negative one if there's an error and we break. I'll probably just return if we can't allocate, that would be fine. We wouldn't have increased the bytes written yet. So that'd be okay. Or we could just return. <clears throat> Yeah, that's all right. Couldn't allocate enough uh, additional memory for file. So the bytes written would be zero, but it should be an error in this case. So let's say it's negative one. Or I could just move, yeah, the literal negative one. Let's just do that. And this will do return instead of a break. Error. Okay. Otherwise, we'll get that. So after we allocated, we want to zero pad the memory. That's fair. 
Otherwise, it could be uninitialized memory. I'll probably do that within here, right? I guess. I'm not sure. How would we do that? Because I do want a zero pad. Well, we have the old size. We have the old offset to the new offset, which is going to be the new size in bytes. The offset is the maximum amount that we're going to, and this is the old amount. And then we have the number of bytes to allocate. So the old amount would be the offset. Well, it would not be the offset. The old amount would be the address that the offset is, you know, counting offset from up to the current size in bytes. It'd be the bytes to allocate from the current size to the new offset. Okay, so the current size would also be sort of the original offset from the address. This, this one is the new offset that we're allocating out to. I guess we would do that, but it'd be it until a new like 4K boundary because we're doing it in terms of pages. But uh, if we're only, if we only need to set to zero memory between or up to the new end of the file and not necessarily the end of the pages we're allocating, that should be okay. So I'll just do that. I'll do that after this is done. So we'll do that here. Set allocated memory to zero to initialize it. So I'll call mem set on OFT address. We need a length. Uh, so this will be address plus whatever the original offset which was, which was the size and bytes for the file. That's the original end of the file. And I need to set to zero the memory allocated beyond that original end to the new end of the file, which is going to be this offset. And since we got the difference here, bytes to allocate, I can use that, right? Because that's that minus, yeah. So I want to set to zero, and the length is going to be bytes to allocate. I think I did mem set correctly, but to make sure, I don't remember. <laughs> Buffer, byte value to set, and length, yeah. Okay. That should be okay. We'll set to zero so the number of bytes between the old and the new offset, which starts at the old offset. Yeah, okay. All right, so that's the new memory. So what do we do after that? Memcopy from the buffer. That was the input argument. We're writing from this buffer to the file by FD or length in bytes. And if they have O append, we'll go to the end of the file. So we might have to do this again. Does this need to be in a loop? <laughs> We're going to the current offset. We'll still have to allocate additional pages, at least one, to go to the new one, <laughs> I suppose, because we're going to be setting a new offset here. That's lame. Set new file size. I do need to set that. As we pad it out to this length, we have the new size, I suppose. This doesn't really need a comment, that's all right. Uh, yeah, I'd probably have to allocate again, right? Depending if they are at, if they're equal here. If the offset is where we're currently at, which would also be the case if they sent the O append as the flag. Because we'd be writing from the end of the file. We wouldn't necessarily need to allocate additional pages, though, would we? We'd need, like, a whole size that we allocated. Hmm. Because they could have allocated pages. And the page boundary would be a 4K boundary. The current written data to the file could, or the file size and data could be less than that 4k boundary. Uh, now I'm confusing myself. <laughs> I mean, we could always do that when we get to it. We can handle edge cases when we get to them, right? And not worry about them right now. That, that might be a better thing to do. Because this code here is not going to be true in all cases. We won't have to run this in all cases. And it's not, it's not really going to be right in all cases either. Like every time the offset's beyond the end of the bytes, this offset might not reach the current end of the current allocated pages that we have allocated for the file. Like even if it's greater than the size in bytes, it might not be out to like 8K or whatever for the pages we have. So 
This might not need to run in all cases that it's greater than the size. I need to keep that in mind. But then I'd have to have something else attached to the file table entries, like how many pages are currently allocated. I mean, that would be good to have, though, good, like, metadata. I might have to add that later. And it's another thing. That's okay. Just thought of that. So, I mean, I have padding bytes, though. I could always add that here. Eh, let's put something to think on. Add, let's say, number of pages currently allocated or allocated size and bytes. In case file size and offset not warrant, let's say need handling for additional allocated pages in e.g. write, but do not go out to additional 4K page boundaries. Yeah, that's reasonable. I might need to add that. That would at least make some things easier to handle. But okay, let's assume we don't have to handle that right now. <laughs> what am I trying to do? I'm trying to do this. I need to mem copy, but I need to handle these cases within the mem copy. If we have OAPEN, set the offset to the new file size before writing. And also, yeah, if we set the new file size, we do need to set the new size in sectors. That is another thing here. And that would be bytes to sectors of the current size in bytes. And I'll probably have to update that on disk. Which I did not make a helper function, did I? Do I have update like inode on disk? No, that would be a good helper function to add. I'll just put more to do's everywhere. <laughs> Or, uh, let's say update inode on disk and others. This would take in an inode. It would read, read that inode from disk, update its value from input inode, and write back to disk. Could save on lines of code in a few places. Because when we do stuff like create file, we could use that here as well. I'm just going to the bottom. Update the data block. That's different. I know some of these, yeah, like here where I'm updating the, the inode for the parent, the parent inode. I'm reading it, I'm setting it, and then I'm writing it. Like, I could abstract that in a few places, and that could also be used over here, where we're updating the inode data, write it back to disk. So I might could do that. That actually wouldn't be bad to add, and it would be pretty quick, I think. Let's do that. Helper function to update an inode on disk in the inode disk blocks. Say void, we'll say update inode on disk, or well, maybe update. No, that's right, yeah. We'll just update inode on disk. We'll take in a constant inode t inode. We'll say we'll do that here. It's more disk IO, so really I kind of want to cache these things and not do them and not write them until I have to, but that's all right. O of T I know that is a pointer. We could take in a pointer. Or we could just take in the inode, which would be dereferencing that. So it does look weird, but that's kind of how I would do that. Take the data at that inode, that inode size of data, pass it to there. Yeah. Okay. And this would do like where I was writing down there. Data inode blocks. Let's read write, get that. Go back up which didn't want to do that. Never mind. Let's go back. 
My jump list is not set up to do this correctly. Okay. Um, and syscalls. Yeah, let's just put this here so I can focus better. So we have one sector we're reading from the inode plus sectors plus whatever inode we got in. That ID divided by inodes per sector. We'll read to temp sector with read with retry. We'll get the data where that inode is at. We'll set that inode data from the input inode here. Which needs to be here as well. And then we'll write that back to disk. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that should be all right. So I'll also do that where I'm updating, just to have it be in a different use case right here. This would be update inode on disk. And we'd give it the parent inode. And that would take care of this stuff here. And I'm sure I could use it in a few other places, I just don't know at the moment. Yeah, like right here. We're reading, we're setting the data and writing. This is a great tangent, not doing what I originally wanted to do, but that's, uh, that's okay. Setting the new inode, doing that. Yeah. Okay. That saves some lines of code, right? It makes some things a little more succinct. We'll put it in the helper there. So where's syscalls and three? Buffer three, okay. So down here. Just because I, I wanted to do that before I implement this more and do testing with this later because I, I want to make sure that the data is on the disk if I have to check it. And since we, if I'd use like the directory command, it would read the inode for the file. And if it wasn't updated on disk, it wouldn't have the right updates. So I do need to update that probably before that happens. So that's why I wanted to get this out of the way first. Would have been a better explanation before I did that, but that's all right. So I doubt this is going to compile. <laughs> Undeclared temp inode. That's true. Where do I have impl 13? Just add a 10 to it. Temp inode. What is this? This is an inode T pointer. Not assigned to size and page with constant qualified type. Yes, that is true. I should just add it. Well, no, because I need the result there first. Yeah. That wouldn't work. Unused variable, but I set the data. What are you talking about? Comparison of integers, different signs, int and uint. If offset is greater than the size, yeah. Oh, offset, I made an int. Why did I do that? Temp inode. I'm setting the data at temp inode right here. Why does it say that's unused? That's weird. I mean, I don't really need that, I guess. I could just set the data here, right? Uh, temp sector plus that sectors. Let's add another one. So this is that. I mean, I could just do that, right? That looks really bad as a one-liner, though. <laughs> the data at, I'm dereferencing it, temp sector plus the inode. Yeah, equals the inode data. Eh. It is valid. Oh, 278 is this one's attempt. Ah, uh, yeah, let me not do that then. Let's not do that then. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, oh, okay. Uh, I'm not tired. I'm just confusing where the errors are. That's at 279. Okay. That's here. Yes. I'm not using it within a uh, create file anymore. That's true. That's all I was worried about. Okay. Then that's different signedness. Sorry. Right. That's what I was worried about. So. I don't want to go to FS simple actually. Let's mess with the file system. 
definitions here. So offsets, well, if I made offset an unsigned integer, that would probably be good, because but we could seek beyond the star of the file, but I'm setting it to zero, right, within seek, so that should be okay. Is there any issue of setting it to unsigned? Offset I'm using as an int. So we can't really seek to the end of a four gig file. That's unfortunate. Offset is signed. Yeah, I did go over this on the last one. Offset is signed, so that's true. But the size and bytes I have as unsigned, which is not, yeah, that's not great. But if it's less than zero from seek set, I want to set it to zero. Hmm. I could do some casting here. Some cast magic or not deal with it. The issue is at 136, yes. Comparing different ones. I mean, we'll have wrapping behavior for unsigned, but... I would have to make sure it's greater than zero, really. But that wouldn't happen in here, because the size would be... The size can't be negative. So the, the terms in which offset would be larger than the size, offset would have to be at least one. It would have to be positive no matter what. So yeah, I'm going to cast this. Since the terms in which this condition would be true would mean that offset has to be at least one, it shouldn't be negative. Because the size and bytes can never be negative, being an unsigned int, I'll just cast the offset to unsigned, which isn't great, but I should fix that. Compile error. Okay. What am I doing with here? Then copy into there. If it has O append, set it to the end of the file, then write. If it's larger than the allocated pages, we have to add new ones, then we mem copy. And probably, since the size is bigger, we may have to add blocks. That's true. Do the extents. I did not check that. That's true. I do update this data. Check if new file size is, well, yeah. Needs another, say, data disk block added to files extents. We have to check if the current ones are greater, so we wouldn't do this first. We do that here before we set these. We might have to increase. That would be if Yeah, we take the size and bytes, we'd get the current size and blocks. And we'd do it for the new offset as well. Yeah, okay, let me make values for these. So we'll have the current blocks that are being used, which will equal this. Current bytes to blocks of the size and bytes. We'll also get the new blocks, which will be where the offset is. Soft? No, OFT. Maybe it's soft. I don't know. <laughs> and that would be the offset because it was originally larger. So that would be if new blocks is greater than current blocks. Oh, then we have to do this. Allocate another disk block to file, to file's extents. And we do this stuff, okay. I'll just say more. Hopefully we don't have to do that for a while. We might if they do O append and stuff. That would be good to add. Because we'll have to do this same rigmarole here <laughs> afterwards. After we go to the current offset, we have to write to the current offset. Like if they have O append, set offset to the end of the file before writing. Do we want to do that first and then go through all this? Probably, right? If the user did seek and they went beyond the current end of the file, but it has the O append flag, does O append like reverse the offset to the current end of the file? If they went beyond it before, I would think it would, right? And then they're writing to the current end. 
And if the user didn't want that to happen, well, they should have written their program better and not done that. Uh. If used, uh, set file offset to end of file, current file size. Let's do that, because then we can do this and we don't have to do the same thing twice. We can just check it once and then allocate and, and do that stuff. And then write to it. A lot of to-dos I'm adding, but that's life. <laughs> Uh, so I have flags, right? I believe, yeah. So if O of T flags and O append. If that's greater than zero, then they have a pen set at least. So we'll set the offset equal to the size and bytes of the file. The current end of the file, which might not be at the current end of the page boundary. So I probably should check that before this, but yeah. Okay. If the new size is larger, add new pages. I mean, I am doing that. Then we mem copy. Then add new data to the extent. So we have to write at the offset. So that's only if it's larger. Okay, then we go to the new one. Uh, I think we can do that here. We can actually do the mem copy. Write data from input buffer to FD at file offsets. So that is what this will ultimately end up doing. I'm just trying to think if this messes that up at all at this point, or if we have to do this again after writing or during writing. We're writing at the current offset. We have the new one set. It might be at the end of the file if this happens. And that might overrun page boundaries, or it might not. I don't know. I don't have that metadata in the file table entry, unfortunately. I do need to set that, probably. Yeah, I'll just do the mem copy. <laughs> we'll make sure it works for basic cases of data under a file, like a hello world string or something, so we can get something done this, this video. Let's do that. I'll mem copy. Include C string. Yes, so destination then source then length. This is not a good mem copy. And mem copy 32 should like gracefully go back down to this one because this only does for length over four. There could be zero to four left to go. Maybe not great. I guess I could do that here though. Because that could be a bug that's been lurking here, right? So let's do length modulo four. Right, and then instead of doing four bytes at a time, we'll just do one byte at a time, which is just what this mem copy does. If it's zero, then it won't go beyond, well, yeah, because it'll be less than zero. Otherwise, it'll be on a one, two, or three. That means we would have to keep I outside of this. We could just do this, and this one we would not set I. Even though I already set it to zero there, that's fine. We can do this. Yeah, that should be okay. It'll just keep monotonically increasing. Okay. Otherwise, we'll do this. So, des, then source, then length. Let's say dest, source, length. So, destination would be the file FD, which would be the offset that it's going into from the address. Would it be address plus offset? It would, right? Because the offset isn't, the offset is a number, it's not an address. It's not a pointer to where the file's at in memory. That's what the address is. So we'd have to do address plus offset to get to where the file's actually at that we're gonna write to. The source would be the input buffer. Yeah, void buff. And the length is the number of bytes we want to write. So I could do mem copy 32, right? That would be all right. That would be at least four bytes. And if it's less than four bytes, then it'll do 0, 1, 2, 3 anyway. 
which means I should set i. <laughs> Oh, I should set i to 0, actually, because it might go to 0 here and not go through. And go to here. Well, it won't matter. Yeah. If it's less than 4 bytes, it'll go down to here anyway. 0, 1, 2, 3. If it's more than 4 bytes, it'll at least do this and then go down here. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do memcopy32 for slight performance reasons, I guess. Okay, so we're passing in length, right? Yes, okay. And if it was at O append, it would write at the end of the file at this point. If it's larger than the currently allocated pages, we need to add new pages. Yeah, I probably should do that. Add length to the offset to set the new offset. I'll just do that. Set new file offset from data written. That makes sense. So plus equal length. The length should have been written. Although we could get the length actually written by subtracting the result of this from the original thing that we were writing to, but let's assume it wrote all the bytes. It would be it would be this. And if that offset is greater than file size and bytes, we need to set that to the new one. Yes. I don't need to comment for every line of code, sorry about that, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'll just copy this. If the offset is greater than the size in bytes, then it needs to equal size in bytes. Assuming it doesn't wrap. So I don't have bounds checking for the, the size compared to the 32-bit limit, which isn't great. Is it the offset is greater than the size, the file size should be that. Yes, this needs to be the new offset. The offset's greater than the size and bytes, that the new size and bytes the offset. Yes. Okay. And the number of bytes actually written. We do need to get that value here. It would be length here. Set new file offset, which I did. Set new file size from data written. I guess that would be what this is. Would we have to do this again? We, we might have to do this again. Allocate and then write to that. I'm not sure. My brain's kind of mushy tonight. Sorry about that. <laughs> not too sure. I should check, because memcopy32 returns the address, right? That's B11. That returns the address of dest that we've written to now. Although we're offsetting, does that even work here? I'm offsetting from DST. I'm just returning the original. That's probably not a good version of memcopy then. Because that would tell me more at this point how much data I actually wrote. If we assume we write all the, all the data, it would be the length and data here. We would add that to the offset because we have the new offset for the data that we just wrote. We'd set the new size for that. But if the data that they wrote here makes the offset greater than, this shouldn't be size and bytes, this should be greater than the allocated stuff we have. We would do that. But bytes written would equal the length here if we wrote all of it. Data written. It's greater than the size. We would set the size and we turn that. I, I think that's okay. It's not great though. I don't like this check and I feel like we have to do it again, but uh, I need to add data, I think. So, from Star Trek, of course. Yeah, let me, let me do that. And if it turns out I don't need this, then I can just remove it because we have 12 bytes of padding here, which is all right. So let's just add another uint32 here. I'm going to do that. I'll call it pages allocated. This be number of pages currently allocated or allocated size of bytes. Well, we're going to allocate a page at a time. So yeah, it, we could do pages allocated. It's file size. Yeah, okay. 
Adding more stuff. Isn't it exciting? So that's four less bytes. This would be eight. Should still be 64. It's one plus four is five plus however big an inode is. That's a pointer, which is four because I'm on 32 bit. This is a pointer, so that's four. 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, plus 8 is 32. Yeah, that should work. So page is allocated. So let's set that up within open, which is not up here. It's down below. So I have a new file. I'm setting one page, right? Well, however many are there. By default, we can set that. So pages allocated will be one. It'll have one page. I believe <laughs> I do the allocation below this point probably. So let me uh, delete that right now. Yeah, I'm allocating here. If we didn't map it, if we did map it, let me add to that. Pages allocated will be plus equal one, or just plus plus. Another page was mapped, allocated for file. So when we initially open the file, we'll set the initial number of pages allocated for the file. If it's empty, it should be one, because we'll have at least one page. Could just set it to size and pages if that's what we're doing, but the number we actually mapped, I want to put. If the file was larger, if it's not a new file, if it's like 8K in size, it would have two pages. So we'd have two here, right? Two that were initially allocated. If we close, then when I wipe it out, that'll be okay. My mem setting to zero? Yeah, that'll be zero anyway. Okay. Okay, so then read and write would use the number here. Write would add new pages, which is what I'm dealing with now. So I can do that. So let's say if the offset not greater than size in bytes, we don't have to allocate. We have to allocate more pages if it's greater than the current size in, in memory, which is in terms of pages. So instead of size in bytes, length size of the file uh, as allocated in memory uh, as pages allocated in memory. Okay. Instead of size and bytes, we will have OFT pages allocated. And offset is in terms of bytes, so this should be in terms of bytes. This would be times page size. So if pages, if it only has one page allocated, this would be one page since size, which would be 4096. If the offset is 5000, it would be greater. We'd have to get a new page. Pages allocated would increase at this point because we're mapping it. We have to make sure we're mapping at the right address as well. This is fine. Um, I guess the physical, the next virtual, I guess would be fine. I would want it to be contiguous from the last one for the file though, but that probably doesn't matter. I don't know. <laughs> that depends on how close works. Oh, oh I'm getting complicated. This assumes it's all linear. It might not be. Yeah, because I'm just adding, I'm adding linearly. Ooh, I would need like a page table in some crap to be like, this is where it's at in memory. Oh, this is, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. That's not good. Okay, let's go back. What am I dealing with here? We'll just deal with this. We'll say if we allocate it, let's assume it's contiguous in memory. I, it's probably not, but that's, that's not great. We'll just, you know, we allocated another page here. File has another page allocated. So maybe instead of pages allocated, I would need a structure that links to, well, a link list would be, you know, bad performance relatively, but some sort of mapping structure that has a tree or something that says, uh, yeah, we could do a link list of pages allocated for the file. That wouldn't be great. I don't want to do that right now. It's too complicated. 
Because we could say, hey, this is the length. You know, we have two pages allocated. They're at separate addresses. They're not guaranteed to be contiguous if we're calling these things at random times. You know, all the memory for a file is not guaranteed to be right after, you know, virtual addresses 10,000 to 20,000 contiguously. It might be at, like, address 5,000. Another page might be at 9,600. Another page might be at, you know, 23525 or something. I don't know. Like, whatever the 4K boundary is near that. And this is assuming they're all linearly allocated for each file, which is not great. When it opens the file, it could be, according to the next available virtual address, but this is not guaranteed to be, you know, the next page size away from the last one whenever this is being called, like for different files. So this is not a good way to do this. This is okay, the counter, but the virtual address, uh... And this isn't even bad right here. The error doesn't really occur. The error occurs like in close. So I'll put the, uh, the note in close here. Uh, this assumes virtual addresses are contiguous for each file. That is not guaranteed to be the case. Update to take this into account to get the actual virtual addresses that were mapped, allocated for the file. Okay, I will have to do that later, sometime. I gotta think about that, because that would probably need some kind of new data structure to hold like a list or a map or something of what pages were allocated for which file, which would be good to have. It's good data to have. But I don't know how I would implement that right now. So I'm probably not going to do it right now. I'll just assume everything's contiguous and hunky-dory, and it's not. Of course, if we're dealing with one file at a time, it should be. If we're dealing with multiple files at a time, right now that shouldn't happen because I only have like a single process effectively. I guess multiprocessing, it could happen. Yeah, so multi-threading or multi-process, this could happen. Otherwise, it, it should be okay, maybe. I don't know. Okay, what else do I have to do for write? What else do I have to do here? Assuming we copied the data, we set the data written, turn the number of bytes, I should be doing that if it's larger. Add new pages, then add new data. Data blocks I'm not doing, actually. We are mem copying. Allocate more disk blocks. That I did in the implementation here, I believe. Yeah, where I'm creating a file or opening a file. Because I had to allocate to the parent inode, right? Yeah, this. Find the end of the last used data blocks. I had to check if the next one's available. So I'd have to do this effectively. So it might be good abstracting this code to a separate function that I could call within this as well. Because I'd have to do a similar thing. Update remaining inode data. I'm also hoping this helper function worked for updating the inode, but it should. Uh. Add another to do here. Abstract this code out into a general helper function as there is more than one place. This logic will be used, can be, can be used. Give an example adding an additional block for files being written to uh, in write syscall. Okay. Not great, but you know. The list of to-dos is exponential, okay? And my coding ability is linear, so it will definitely, yeah, very rapidly outsize what I'm able to do. That's okay. I think for write, this is a decent beginner implementation. It's not great, <laughs> of course. Uh, but assuming we don't write beyond the end of the allocated blocks or the allocated pages, we should be okay. 
because we're just setting offset values according to the current size and what we're writing. And ultimately all we're doing is memcop. We're just copying data is all we're doing from one buffer to another buffer. So, and then returning that we wrote that data, hopefully. Uh, I think that's all I have to do. I should check. So I am going to check called undeclared function bytes to block. That's true. Let's see bytes to block because I did not remember what the line number was. There it is. Declared identifier offset. I did not put an arrow. I put an underscore 191. Dereference that. Okay, let's see if that helper function like broke what I currently did, which would show up in here. It says it worked, so I guess we're good. We have open close test, which it created and closed. We had seek test, it made the seek test file. We have those there. This should be about 14, just to make sure I don't have a memory leak. 14, okay. So that's good. Hey, that's good to know. So let's test uh, writing to a file. We could implement read as well, but I guess I'll make a basic write test. Uh, don't have that command run test. Okay. Let's add another one. Let's do seek syscall. Let's say on empty file, on new or empty file. We'll also have another one here on, which be on file with the data. I'm going to do some quick write tests. This will be to do. Since my timer went off, let's do write syscall test. Let's do for new file. Let's do test write. This will be at the bottom. This is test seek. How do we test the right syscall? Uh, well, we'll have to open and close, of course. That's all right. Right test.txt will open. We don't need a seek value right now. We couldn't create the file, otherwise we'll do this. We'll close it. Okay, how do we actually Test the right syscall. Well, we need to write to it. We need to write the data actually return, like in an assert like way. So, what should we equal? Let's say we have hello world. We'll just try that to um, our FD here. So, let's write. Let's write to the FD. We're opening it with OCreate. We don't have O append. I do need to test O append. Test O append. Right now, I'm just going to do a basic hello world test and see if it works. So we have an FD. We need a buffer and a length. The buffer can be some other thing that we have here. Let's do that. I'll just call it buff character buff here. Let's say it'll allocate. It'll know how large it is. The compiler will. Hello world. We'll write FD, we'll write the buffer. The length will be the length of Hello World, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does Vim tell me? Oh, yeah, it tells me it's under my face, but it says 14 here. If I just select within double quotes, it's 13, uh, which is five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, okay. I'll just write 13. I could write 14 to, have, to include the, uh, the null byte, right? So let's just do that. I want to see if 14 equals that, then we're good. If it doesn't equal that, then we're bad. And I'll do this. Uh, error did not write. Let's say, yeah, did not write hello world. <laughs> did not write percent %s, yeah. To file percent %s. 
buff. So they could not write that. Buff file. Return false. Okay. We'll see if that works. Probably won't. This is, we'll say it's a constant right here. Could do size of. It'll be constant buffer at this point, and we'll change this soon, but that's all right. Do I have an error? Undeclared identifier, test right. I just named the thing, but I did not forward declare it. That is true, which is always fun. There we go. And then we can do run test. Hey, it passed. Write sys call for new file. Created write test. I should not print that data. It did make the file here. It should have done another block. Oh, but it closed it, so it recouped that. Okay. Easier than I thought. Assuming I wrote my test correctly, it did write that data and return that data as being written. So that new offset that was set from the length. The only way of knowing is if the size was correct, right? I didn't remember to check that, but let me get rid of this thing that says we printed it, created. Yeah, if it's not equal to negative one, then we're good. So we can just do this if fd is less than zero. So I want to get rid of printing if on success, because I'm only going to print if there's an error. Otherwise, it'll say OK. We don't really need to know or care, in my opinion. Let's grab that. Put that there. Just get rid of that. Could not create file. Okay. Closed file. Well, I can get rid of the closed one as well. This, this is what I want to say. Seek. Okay. This. Okay. Test passed. The right test. Uh, it says the size is zero, which is not correct. The size should be 14. So that is a bug. But I could add that to my test, of course, to realize that it's a bug. Let me do that. Where am I testing closed file? It says close, closed file. I don't need this. So this would be if close fd not equal zero. Don't need that text on there. So if 14 equals right, we'll do this. And I'm just going to copy this. <laughs> if 14 does not equal the size. How do we get the size of the file, though? I would have to read, right? And then test the read, or I would need an ftel. Oh, I'd have to seek. Oh, wouldn't I? Yeah. But seek would get the offset. So really, it's, it's something that isn't set within the current directory, actually. I think that actually is okay there. And I had that issue when I made a new file as well. I had to update the things on the disk. Let me just think, is that what the issue is here? Because at the end here, I had to update the inodes if the inodes were updated. And that updates in memory, but that's what's being read from when it sets the initial data when I run the directory command. Because <laughs> I'm in the root inode, which is also the current directory. But this might not be updated from the new size. I mean, I guess that is updated. The directory is, but the file isn't being updated. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what am I even talking about? What does it say? 926. 924. Is that an issue? Does close not? What's wrong with that? I need a brace. That's what's wrong with that. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say we have directory here is the size of this directory 704. That should increase by the number of things that we ran. Right. So if we created, you know, one file for this, that should increase by. You know, whatever the file, whatever the size of one of these directory entries is, which I think is 64. This is 11 times 64 to get that. So one, two, three, I'm assuming. 
So it should be three times 64, which would be 196. Or is it 192? 192. So that should be 896, should be the new size of the directory. So that's right. But the size of the file, like write test, we should have written data to it. So the size should be 14, right, for the string that we wrote to it, but the size is not, or 13, whatever the size of the string. But that size did not go up, so that is a bug. So that's the size in the inode. Did I change the size in bytes of the inode? Maybe I didn't. That's something I could forget. Because so we have bytes written. I set the offset, I set the length, I set the size in bytes to the offset if it's greater. And initially, that size in bytes should be zero. So it should be greater and it should set the new uh, file size. But I do a uint. Yeah, a u undo, not a uint. I did a uint for that, but. I guess if this is different, this should set the data here. It sets the inode size, but I guess if I'm not updating that inode on disk, this isn't gonna be updated. Yeah, so I'm setting the new size, but I'm not doing this. Yeah, I have to do that again. Or I can just not do it here and do it later. Right, let's do that. I guess we'll do it after. Just in case, yeah, just in case. Yeah, <laughs> update files, inode data. All right, so I was setting the size, but I wasn't setting it on disk and the directory command reads that disk size. So that would be why it did not update. Uh, there we go, yeah, now it says 14 for the size for write test, okay. All right, that wasn't that big of a deal. Reading this is a big of a deal, I need to, get you know the fixed length and print f but one thing at a time basic writing a string to a file done okay that's what i wanted to accomplish took a bit over an hour that's okay <laughs> i'll try to edit that down a little bit um yeah i know i have to mess with allocating additional blocks but technically for a base case this is okay so i'm going to remove that right now i'm going to do read on the next one and then i will try to load the editor calculator at least and load a file and read it as like a, a cat or type command. So I'll try to do that on the next one. Hopefully read doesn't take as long. There's not as many edge cases for read as far as messing with stuff on disk because we're not updating the file in any way. We're just updating a buffer with data read from the file. If the buffer is big enough, really, I don't have a length of a buffer, so this is kind of error prone, isn't it? Read and write. I have the length of data, but that doesn't mean the buffer holds all of that. Ooh. But that's how the API is implemented. Oh, well, I'll get to read on the next one. <laughs> Hopefully this was okay. I know my brain's a little mushy today, so I was confused a lot, but um, okay. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you then. Cheers.